It's 4.30. This is WKYT This Morning, and we have the latest news coming up for you. The search continues for the bodies of a missing northern Kentucky couple. You'll hear from friends of the couple just ahead on WKYT. Today, a Lexington firefighter who died after battling cancer will be buried. We'll have details on the funeral coming up. And it's a game that's gripping the nation, but not everybody's thrilled about it. Why some Lexington businesses have put up signs saying no Pokemon Go users. Ahead on WKYT this morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Hope you had a great weekend. Welcome in on your Monday. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. Let's get a check of the weather and see what's happening in that department, Micah. You know, we had a great weekend, and it looks like it's going to continue for today. However, it's not for everybody because a couple of us will actually deal with a couple of rumbles, especially southbound. Southern zones will have the better chance of actually seeing that. Temperatures are in the 60s this morning. It's a great feel in Danville, Richmond. 63 degrees. Humidity still down just a bit, but that's going to increase today. And like I said, south of I-64 will have the best chance of rain today. And that's still a relatively small chance. The chances do pick up, though, in the upcoming days as we'll have daily threats at rain. I'll get into that coming up in a few minutes. Okay, see you then. Thank you. And the news, friends and family of a missing northern Kentucky couple say they have not given up hope. They spent the weekend searching for the couple's bodies. Robert Jones and Crystal Warner went missing last week. State police charged Charles Pennington with their murder. Debbie Kawati's Caitlin sent her talk to friends of the victims. There's so many rumors and, and things that are spinning around. Family, friends, and complete strangers looking for answers after police say the case of a missing northern Kentucky couple is a murder case. A former our officer stepped in and joined the search. We sign everybody in so that everybody that leaves the field, um, we check them out, make sure everybody checks their name off so that we don't leave anybody behind. It's a premature starting point, but we're here and we've gathered. Upwards of 50 people signed in, hopeful they'd find Robert Jones and Crystal Warner. For our first day out here, uh, just beginning a surge, a coordinated effort. Uh, Outpouring from the community is wonderful. Not everyone that came out today for the search knew the family, but they said they wanted to be here to bring closure for family and friends. Um, I've only had the privilege of meeting Bobby a couple times, real personable, uh, really friendly, outgoing. I'm more doing this for his sons, um, just the, the grief they must feel and needing to start some kind of closure. Um, pondered that quite a bit. But before the search began, Jones ex wife asked the group to stand down, saying it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack right now. I'm just looking at the topo map and realizing with the small amount of information that's come forward so far, how much ground there is to cover. KSP is actively investigating and trying to find an area of concentration to search. In the meantime, friends say they won't stop searching for answers. Trying to find out where this um, Craig Pennington was originally from and, you know, did he hunt, did he fish? Um, is he familiar with the woods? In Woodford County, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Well, friends and family say they'll search again when state police give them some new information to go on. Firefighters are trying to figure out what started a fire at a home in Lexington. Here's some video that a viewer sent us. The fire started about 8 o'clock last night on Fontaine Road. Firefighters say when they got there, the back deck was on fire. People near the house say smoke filled the air. We know the people that live next door, so we want to stop by and make sure everyone was okay, if it was their house, if it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, but when we pulled up, the whole house was in flames. All of it engulfed in flames. Uh, we wanted to make sure everyone was okay. Everyone was okay. And it was the case no firefighters uh, or anyone else was hurt. They're still trying to determine if the cause of the fire is suspicious or was accidental. In Rock Castle County, firefighters are trying to figure out what sparked two car fires yesterday. Mount Vernon Fire Department is saying that flames damaged a car and an ATV parked outside a home. Nobody was hurt there. Today, first responders will say goodbye to a Lexington firefighter. Matt Logsdon passed away last week after a battle with cancer. His funeral is in Louisville today. Yesterday, dozens of people stopped by his visitation. Sabira Rayford talked to some of Logsdon's co workers. It's just been tough. And, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, just like with this uh, cancer bill passing, it's, uh, it's a problem within our profession that we've got to conquer it and tackle it. and prevent it as much as we can. Captain Chris Bartley is referring to Senate Bill 195, 
Firefighters in the community say it's a godsend. The bill provides death benefits for firefighters who obtain certain types of cancer. But we also know the job we do, those are some of the dangers that we've got. So, uh, you know, we'll see what we can do. Bartley knows firsthand about those dangers. In fact, he watched one man fight cancer on the front lines. He was a heck of a fighter and uh, just, uh, you know, fell short there. And, uh, but he gave it his all and uh, made everybody proud. Today, people paid their respects to firefighter Matt Loxton at Highlands Funeral Home in Louisville. He passed away earlier in the week after battling cancer. His brother-in-law, Matt, tells us he was a fighter to the end and always humble. We got a glimpse of that in an interview we did with Logston back in February. If we could not make it up here without everybody behind us, praying for us, being there for us, doing everything. They basically just said, you go get better, we'll take care of everything here. Logston served as a firefighter for 10 years. In Louisville, Sabir Rayford, WKYT. Logston's funeral is today at 1 at Northeast Christian Church in Louisville. State police are searching for an inmate who escaped from a jail in Graves County. They say on Friday, 28-year-old Capus Kane Adams jumped over a fence at the Graves County Restricted Custody Center. He was serving a sentence for theft. Adams is six feet tall, he's bald, has brown eyes, and he was last seen wearing a gray t-shirt and red and white striped jail pants. Adams is from Hopkins County. Dozens of horses involved in an animal cruelty case are slowly improving. Several weeks ago, rescuers found 43 horses, most of them thoroughbreds, without food on a Mercer County farm. Yesterday, we checked up on them. A team of volunteers and veterinarians are working around the clock to help them. They say the horses have gained about 75 to 150 pounds. Investigators have charged Chuck Burrell with 43 counts of second degree animal cruelty. His daughter and famous horse trainer, Maria Burrell, is wanted on the same charges. She trained the horse that won the Breeders' Cup Sprint last year. If this case is not pursued and we lose it for some reason and the pressure is not kept on the county attorney, she will have every right legally to take these horses back. And the horses' caregivers think it will likely take more than a year for the horses to make a full recovery. They think it will be another six months for the case to go to trial. A Walmart damaged last week and a Lawrence County tornado will reopen this week. Store managers at the Louisa location were hoping to open up the grocery section Saturday. Now they're hoping that will happen tomorrow or at uh, about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. The Walmart pharmacy opened back up on Friday. The tornado that hit the store blew through last Monday. The National Weather Service says it was an EF2 tornado. In southeastern Kentucky, people are still cleaning up from Friday's heavy rain and strong winds. Water surrounded Couch's Fork Church of God in Leslie County Friday. The pastor's uh, church's pastor there and congregation worried the rising water would get inside the building. They say the water stopped, though, at the edge of the doorway. The uh, lady up the, up the road here said that uh, the water, she had never seen the fierceness of the water, how, how raging it was when it came out, came out of that hollow there. People say this is the third time in the last two years that area has had some major flooding. Well, Cruz in Jessamine County will break, break ground on a new youth facility this month. The Kentucky United Methodist Homes for Children and Youth will start work July 18th. They say the Nicholasville campus costs $15 million. The program has been in Woodford County since the 1930s. The home is for abused, neglected, and abandoned children. The new center will house 20 teenagers, include a school and paddocks for equine therapy. A new game is becoming pretty popular in Lexington, but not with local business owners. Pokemon Go is an app for a smartphone. Users walk around real-world locations to find creatures and catch them on their phone screens. Many people are walking around Lexington playing the game, but it has started to cause some problems for some Lexington businesses. Managers at Palmer's in Lexington Green had to put up no Pokemon Go user signs. So we had somebody try to walk in the kitchen. We've had people standing right in front of people eating. And in places that really um, are making it difficult for us to get through. <laughs> Some users say the app is so popular right now, they're having trouble logging on to its servers. <laughs> Well, I actually witnessed that for myself at the Arboretum. Everybody yeah. was walking around with these phones. <laughs> Didn't know I was what like, it was. What is going on? This thing is like <laughs> taking the world by storm. Pokemon Go all yeah. of a sudden. All right. Time this morning coming up on 440. WKYT this morning. We're just getting started on your Monday. Well, with temperatures rising, so does the risk of heat exhaustion. Moms Everyday shares how to keep your little ones cool after the break. 
pretty calm this morning, but once we hit the afternoon, it looks like we're going to have at least a small chance of rain. We're going to get into that forecast coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Well, it was a really, really nice weekend. I mean, the humidity was down. It looks like most of us will stay with humidity down once again for today. But you really got to watch southern half because that's where we start to see a little moisture creep on in. And that will also show with maybe even a couple of rumbles of thunder. It is possible, but not likely. We'll just put it that way. Defender Radar Network, we're good to go this morning. Temperatures are in the 60s. It's 63 right now in Pulaski County. Yeah, that goes for Danville. That goes for Richmond. Things are looking just fine as you're walking out the door this morning. No problems there on the roadways either. So we haven't heard anything traffic-wise and also rain-wise. No wet roads outside. So things are looking just fine. Hour by hour forecast through the morning, no issues. Then we hit the afternoon. Now, afternoon and off into the evening hours, see the icons of maybe a little bit of rain. It's possible, but like I said, it's not likely. It's only about a 30% chance of rain, and most of that will stay in the southern half of our viewing area. So most of us will be dry today. Temperatures right around 87 degrees. Off into the evening and night, things really fade away, and then we go through the next few days. That's where it's going to get a little interesting. It's a decent start to the work week. It's not all that bad. Humidity will be on the increase. You'll start to feel that tomorrow, Thursday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Those three days, or four days rather, are the better opportunity to start to feel the difference and see the difference because then we'll have a daily threat at rain chances every single day from Tuesday through Friday. Once we hit the weekend, it does look much better again, but we just are going to have at least some thunderstorms there with us. I will tell you this, it doesn't look like anything like we had last week, okay? So you'll get some thunderstorms, but it's more of your summertime pop-up thunderstorms rolling on through. The front pushes through on Thursday, or Friday, and notice I said Thursday or Friday, and not just one of those days, because but all these models, man, they, they just don't have a great grip on when this front pushes on through. So Thursday or Friday, right now I'm leaning more toward Thursday than any other day, but still, we're going to be watching that very closely. The weekend looks much drier, only very slight chances of rain, guys, and this weekend was really nice, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Not all that bad. I mean, humidity down, we'll take it. The rain was out of here. I think that was the key. It was amazing. And, yeah, the bright sunshine is always helpful. Picture yes, up. That's the truth. Like a thank you. 445 on WKYT. Heat exhaustion can be a serious medical concern. In today's Mom's Everyday Minute, we have some ways to prevent it from happening to your children. Hello, I'm Katie Kunkel. Extreme heat can be more than just uncomfortable, it can make your child sick. If your child is active in heat and humidity, beware of heat exhaustion. Here are some tips from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Make sure your child stays hydrated. Encourage her to drink water regularly, even before she asks for it. Plan for more time to rest than usual. Heat can often make children feel tired. When your child is feeling hot, give him a cool bath or water mist to cool down. Remember, it takes up to 10 days to get used to high summer temperatures, and while sweating is the main way to eliminate excessive heat, it becomes less effective when humidity levels are high. It's also important to know that infants are at an added risk of heat-related illness because they are less able to sweat. For more tips to make mom's life easier, visit MomsEveryDay.com. For these tips and more, go to WKYT.com, click on Moms Every Day. Monday morning, July 11th. Glad you're with us on WKYT this morning. We have a lot more coming up for you. Well, police say the Dallas sniper may have planned an even bigger attack. We'll hear from Dallas police when we come back on WKYT this morning. Hey, good morning, and welcome back into WKYT this morning. We're glad you're along our time this morning. Coming up on 450, Dallas police now believe the gunman who ambushed and killed five officers was planning an even larger attack. CBS's Danielle Nottingham is tracking the investigation. Dallas police are pouring over Micah Johnson's journals. The Army Reserve veteran murdered five officers in a sniper style attack as a peaceful protest ended last Thursday. There was quite a bit of rambling in the journal. Uh, that, that's hard to decipher. Police found two letters scribbled in blood on the walls of the building where Johnson died after hours of negotiations broke down. I'm very determined about hurting more officers. 
Thousands attended a town hall in Dallas to honor the fallen and find solutions to the recent police involved shootings that have impacted many black communities around the country. They've given up on the system. They're taking matters into their own hands. Wrong. It's wrong. Shauna Sterling was also there. Her nephew, Alton Sterling, was shot to death by Baton Rouge police last week. Videos of the shooting went viral. When I saw the second tape, he suffered. He suffered. President Obama will be here in Dallas on Tuesday to attend a memorial service for the fallen officers and to help the survivors heal. Funeral services for Sergeant Michael Smith will be held Tuesday. The 25 year department veteran leaves behind a wife of nearly 20 years and two teenage children. Meanwhile, eerie signs of a city once under siege still linger as FBI investigators process the crime scene and haul away police cars riddled with bullets. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Dallas. Well, Dallas police say Micah Johnson would only talk to a black negotiator. Officers in Louisiana arrested more than 130 people this weekend. Those arrests come after protests about the deadly police involved shooting last week. The National Bar Association is offering legal assistance to people arrested during weekend protests. The lawyers want to know why officers arrested the protesters on state charges, which require a state judge to set bond before release. In Minnesota, dozens of protesters were out again in front of the St. Anthony Police Department. The protests are in response to the deadly shooting of Philando Castile, Officer Geronimo Yanez shot the 32-year-old last week during a traffic stop. Castile's fiance live streamed the aftermath on Facebook. And the protests are more widespread than Louisiana and Minnesota. Hundreds of people marched yesterday in Cincinnati and in Louisville. And in Memphis, thousands gathered. Memphis protesters blocked traffic on both sides of Interstate 40 for hours. Interim Police Director Michael Rawlings locked arms in solidarity with people marching off the bridge. But several hundred protesters remained until late Sunday night. Interstate traffic was stopped for about four hours. New this morning, guitarist Joe Perry has been taken to the hospital after collapsing on stage while performing in New York City. It happened last night while Perry was performing with Johnny Depp and Alice Cooper in his side band, The Hollywood Vampires. The band continued playing after Perry left the stage. A spokesperson says he is stable and resting. Perry is best known, of course, for his years that he spent as lead guitarist for Aerosmith. Lawmakers from across the South are in Lexington this week. They're in town for the Southern Legislative Conference. And yesterday, instead of talking politics, they serve those in need. Attendees met at Heritage Hall and packed meals for God's Pantry Food Bank. It's 15 southern states that have an agreement to meet each and every year in respective host states, whichever it may be. Not a better way to kick off the actual uh, conference than to uh, give back to the community. Their goal today, or yesterday I should say, was to pack 80,000 meals. The conference wraps up in a couple days. Next year it'll be in Biloxi, Mississippi. All right, but they get down to business today, downtown, like they're talking policy. Time this morning is 4.53, and coming up, a look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. We'll also have another look at your morning forecast. Stick around with us. Hey, good morning, and welcome back in. KYT this morning on the air, and we're coming up on 457. It's time to take a look right now at some of the stories we're working on for you at this hour. Today, friends and family will be saying goodbye to a Lexington firefighter who died last week after battling cancer. The funeral for Matt Logsdon will be held in Louisville. We'll have more details on that coming up in our next half hour. And let's get a look at weather right now with Micah. Pretty good start to the day. We're at 63 right now in Boyle County, and a lot of us there in the mid 60s. It's not a bad feel outside. And as you're walking out the door, no problems whatsoever there on the roadways, no rain falling on you. Only a slight chance there by noon. But I would say by the afternoon, look from 1 to about 8 p.m., you could have a chance of a couple of rumbles of thunder, especially in the southern zones. Cumberland Parkway, How Rogers Parkway, that is your best bet. But that's still 30%. So most of us will stay dry today at 87 degrees. The next few days, that's going to change, and we will have some rain in the forecast. I'm going to talk about that. We have another two hours of WKYT news coming up in just a couple of minutes. We'll see you then.